Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Algorithm Minds. My name is Asan Khurram and in this channel I teach programming skills in Python, MATLAB and R programming. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can actually implement finite element analysis using MATLAB. We will solve a 1D unsteady heat equation and I will go through step by step where I will discuss about the theory as well as the practical programming skills which you need in order to implement a finite element analysis method in MATLAB. So without further ado, let's move on to the theory theoretical part of this uh, section. So first of all, we have like this uh, heat equation, which has a, a, a variable time t, which t represents temperature. And it is a function of x, where x represents the space and t, small t represents the function of time. So basically, we have a variable t, which is a function of x and t. And we have like this derivative with respect to time is equal to alpha two times the derivative of the variable with respect to x. Okay, so we have uh, on the left hand side, we have a derivative with respect to time. And on the right hand side, we have derivative with respect to uh, x that is space. Okay, where alpha is the thermal diffusivity. So this is a, like a one dimensional equation that describes the distribution of a uh, temperature in a road over time. So in finite element analysis or method, what we are actually going to do, we are actually going to convert these uh, derivative equations into algebraic equations. So we have some predefined schemes that we can actually use or methods that can actually help us convert these derivative equations into algebraic equation. So this is exactly what you are going to do. So in order to discretize the equation with respect to space, what we are going to use, we are going to use the central difference scheme, which is uh, described is such that when we have a derivative of a variable, uh, two times the derivative of variable with respect to a specific quantity in our case is x, it is equal to ti plus one, uh, which is the variable value or temperature value at the next position minus 2ti, which is the temperature value at the current position plus ti minus 1, which is the temperature value at the previous uh, position. They are, and then this whole thing is divided by delta x, which is the uh, discretization uh, unit, like how many sample points or grid points you will have within a length L. So delta L is calculated such that we have delta X is equal to L by N minus one. In the same way, we will use a forward Euler method to discretize the time domain. So here DT by DT will be replaced by TI N plus one, M N plus one minus TI N, where TI N plus one is the temperature value at a current position I in the next time step which will be calculated based on what the actual value we have in the current time step. So when we do all those three characterizations, what we will actually have, we will have some sort of this equation here, okay? So which will, which will actually help us to calculate the temperature value at the next time step with the help of the temperature value at the current time step plus this quantity. So which has alpha delta T by delta X square then we have some uh, discretization. So this is basically an algebraic equation. We have, uh, if you recall that I also told you that discretization is actually converting those derivative equations into algebraic equations. So with the help of this, we are able to uh, convert it into algebraic equations. Now this algebraic equation is applicable on the grid points, okay? Where I is actually represents a grid point and N represents the time step here. Now that being said, let's move on and actually go towards the MATLAB environment. So these are the first initial parameters that we are going to use for our problem. We have the length of road is equal to 10 meter. You can change it to five meter, whatever you want. Then we have N is equal to 50. So which is the number of grid points that we actually want in our sample. So I will change it to something like 10. Okay, that being said, then we have alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity. Then we have T naught, which is the initial uh, temperature value at the length uh, zero. So this is like this value. Then we have TL is equal to zero, which is the 
initial temperature value at the right boundary so this is the temperature value at the right boundary when we have t is equal to when we have x is equal to 10 now uh, this is like we have t n which is the time uh, what what time the our calculation will end we set it to 10 then this is the formula to calculate delta x uh, which is L divided by N minus 1 and finally we have the delta T value uh, at what time step you actually want to cal uh, calculate uh, the derivative of uh, time. Now going back to stability condition check. So we ensure the stability of numeric scheme the time step delta T must satisfy the CFL current Federici's new condition of 1D heat equation which is such that the, the final calculation of the alpha delta T upon delta X square must be always be less than or equal to uh, 1 over 2. This condition must be ensured or verified in order to have a stable numeric solution of those differential equations. And we finally, we will have some boundary conditions and initial conditions. So boundary conditions are such that where L is equal to zero and L is equal to the final value of the length of rod. So we say that uh, the temperature value of uh, at every time step T uh, at length is equal to zero is equal to T naught and temperature value T at length L, which is the final value of rod and every time step is TL okay so T O T node and TL are the temperatures at the left bound right boundary conditions then we have initial conditions what are the actually initial conditions of uh, our uh, road we can set it up to our own preferences for in our case I have set it to zero so we can actually see uh, the temperature rising up as we go along the road now that being said, this is where we actually uh, verifying the stability condition check where we say if alpha dot delta t divided by delta x power 2 is greater than 0 0.5, we will display an error. Time step is too large, stability condition is not satisfied. But in our case, it will be satisfied because we have chosen such kind of uh, values. Now that being said, so the next thing we actually need to do is actually uh, implement this equation in the form of INJ in MATLAB code uh, in the form of arrays and matrices. So this is exactly what we are going to do. If you recall that uh, we will convert X into uh, sample points. This lin space here is actually a function that takes the input argument. The first input argument is the starting point of uh, value. The second input argument is the ending value and n is the uh, total points that you want in that uh, specific domain. So if I choose x and type x here, let me run this for 10 columns. Now, if I choose x here, now you can see that x has a final value of 10 and it has an initial value of 0. Okay. So it means that it creates this lint space function actually creates uh, an array that starts with 0, ends at L value, and it contains n number of points which is equally discretized or equally spaced. Okay. Where n is the number of grid points. Then what we actually do here. Uh, based on the uh, number of grid points, we actually create the initial value of uh, the temperature of the road. Okay, so once we have defined the grid points, which is on the space distance for x units delta x, the next thing we are going to do, we are going to initialize or we are going to describe the initial temperature value at these grid points. Okay, and that is actually calculated based on this formula, whatever the value we have here TL, which is the temperature at the end or end of road, whatever the value it is there. So we are going to use this function. So this uh, uh, function once comma one comma comma n will actually create an array of uh, n uh, dimension. It will have one row 
and n columns and it will create one 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 values in it and we are using dot static which means that we are actually multiplying every one value with pl which is a uh, the value we have defined earlier which is zero so by the end of this we will have actually uh, an array that has 50 values and all those values will be equal to zero 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 because we have value tl is equal to zero but uh, the last thing we are actually going to do here what we are going to do we are going to actually change the initial value of temperature which in our case is actually 100 so for the initial temperature value uh, the temperature value at uh, length 0 would be equal to t naught which is 100 so that's why i use this command on uh, here now once you have done that the next thing we are going to do we are going to initialize a figure by using this statement figure and once we done that now all we are actually uh, left with is to do the calculation based on the grids based on the i and j in matlab coding okay so we are going to simulate this equation in matlab with the help of uh, for loop if you see here uh, we have like time loop then we have space loop okay so here t is equal to zero dt dot d and represents uh, the time loop where the time will start from zero and it will end at td which is uh, 10 and dt represents the temperature difference in our case we set it to 0 0.5 so it will run from 0 0 0.5 1 1 1.5 and so on and up to the very end of temperature that is 10 second now the next thing we are going to do we were actually going to initialize a variable name t underscore new and we will equate this value to t so which is the initial temperature value once we done that now what we are going to do we are at every time step we are going to iterate at every location okay so for for space for example for time zero we are going to iterate at every uh, location of the grid of the road from zero to whatever the length is it and then we will calculate this equation we will calculate the temperature new value which is the ti n plus one is equal to the initial value ti and then we have alpha delta t upon delta x square which is exactly with this is the quantity alpha dot t t divided by delta x power square and finally we will have this uh, equations at well okay so like ti minus 1 minus 2 ti plus ti plus 1 where n represents the current time step okay so this is exactly what it is so ti minus 1 minus 2 ti plus ti plus 1 so if you don't have an idea about what does this ti minus 1 or ti ti plus 1 or the indexing mean i suggest you to, to watch my uh, introductory video to matlab where i actually teach you about the indexing of matlab so you will be able to better understand what uh, how we can actually implement uh, this calculation now once we've done that uh, what we are actually going to do, we are going to update the value of t here, where t is equal to t new. And after that, we are going to apply the boundary conditions here. We have like t1, which is the left boundary, and we have tn, which is the final boundary. In our case, uh, the temperature value at the length l, so which will remain constant throughout the time step after updating those value by using this statement what we are actually going to do we actually want to visualize those value with the help of iterations okay so this is exactly what we are going to do so we will see that at every iteration the value of t is updated and we are able to visualize that with the help of this statement which will give us an, some animated plot so we will plot x which uh, represents the x values or the grid values then we plot the updated temperature values and we are setting its marker is equal to zero so basically we will have a plot with the line and a marker then we will also plot a dynamic time step we are using as printf where we are displaying the time uh, and percentage dot two f where it actually submits or uh, implements the value of t in the string and then we have x label y label we are also defining the uh, range of x's 
and we are using pause statement which is used to actually pause the graph for 0.5 seconds so we can actually visualize the changes in it okay so that being said let me just run this code for you Now you can see that the value has changed and we can see visualize this thing. So let me change this something like, okay, we want for something like uh, 50 seconds instead of uh, 10 seconds. Now with the passing of time, you can see actually see the values at that uh, grid is increasing, which is quite easy, uh, I mean, quite accurate to visualize. Uh, that we have some values here okay so now if you, if you see that initial value was zero but with the passing of time its values increase because on the left hand boundary we have 100 temperature and on the right hand boundary we have 10 temperature what we actually want to uh, let's say increase the value of uh, l something like okay we want 20 values and we want 20 nodes in it and we are actually changing this value to 300 T node initial value is changed to 300 and we are also changing its value to let's say 300 let me just run this code again Now you can see that we have changed the value or the left boundary condition to 300 and uh, we have also changed the length of grid that is now instead of 10 we have 20 and that's how you can actually implement finite element analysis method in MATLAB. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. So if you have any questions regarding today's tutorial feel free to write down your comments I will be happy to help you out. Uh, I uh, produce a details tutorial series on MATLAB programming where I teach you the fundamentals of MATLAB programming. I suggest you to go and watch that video. Uh, it will be a highly resourceful video. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you soon in the next video.